Thank you for downloading the Radio Cardiff Sport Podcast. For more information about the show, go to our blog. Radio Cardiff Sport blogspot.com Okay, so 10 minutes past 7 and we'll move straight to Gavin who's our special guest. So Gavin, uh, tell us a little bit about why you're here at Radio Cardiff. Um, looking at it uh, from the outside, obviously uh, Barrytown is a club that uh, is close to my heart and is close to uh, the hearts of many people around Wales. Um, it's done a lot for football in Wales um, over the years. We're currently in our centenary year and um, the club is under sort of real threat if you like at the moment from not even existing next mm. year and uh, I'm part of a supporters committee stroke as manager um, to try and help us um, achieve our target of possibly um, by completing a fans buyout or uh, finding somebody willing to, to back us and support us. Now you were coach of Barrytown for four years is that correct? That's right yeah. Yeah. And uh, when was that? Uh, started in uh, 2007 and uh, well finished last year uh, for a brief stint in the Welsh Premiership with Halford West County. Okay, so um, in terms of then, you know, the current situation at uh, at Barry, um, I'm right in saying, aren't I, that the club needs an immediate injection of 125,000 yeah. uh, pounds, with which uh, the fans can then take ownership of the club. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, it's important for us to mention that that 125,000 is not debt. Um, in years gone by, Barry did have a reputation of being ultra successful, but at the same time being quite excessive with the way in which mm. they they achieved that. But um, that is not debt; that is there to purchase the club. The club itself, and what I mean by the club, is uh, the, the sort of the football side of it um, is separate to the bar side of it, and the bar side of it is a profitable business. Mm. So um, hopefully that we can raise that money and uh, and generate the profits and push them towards the football. Yeah, you talked there about you know the history of Barry and, and why it's such an important club in. in in terms of Welsh football history and, and indeed in you know um, British football history let's be honest indeed. because there's been a lot of European and high level connections just tell us a bit about the history of the club yeah I'll be honest with you when I first got involved with Barry my um, sort of understanding was quite ignorant if I'm being honest I, I, I recognised the recent achievements um, the sort of the recent European uh, adventures but the club you know in its hundred years has achieved a hell of a lot um, you know notable sort of uh, FA Cup ties against Reading and Swansea who included the likes of Toshak and things like that um, but more recently you know the the names that everyone associates themselves with the Portos, the Dynamo Kievs, the Aberdeens, the Valettas, uh, Skontorigas etc have been regular visitors to Jenner Park and, and Barry have acquitted themselves well and Porto, of course, were your last European scalps. That's, I think so, yeah. Um, I believe that's ten years ago uh, this year. Um, admittedly, the first leg was uh, um, a game that we lost out of sight. Uh, but at home, you know, we have the pride of saying that you know, uh, a non-league team, if you like, from Wales has beaten a, a former Champions League uh, trophy winner. And you can also say that you uh, helped... Uh, improve Porto's odds in the years to come because you've, your 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 defeat of Porto brought in a certain Mourinho. Uh, we all like to do our bit, yes. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, Jose is listening and uh, you can return that favour. I'm sure he's a fan of Radio Cardiff. If I'm you sure are, Jose, uh, you know where to find us. Oh two nine two oh two three five double six four. But there we go. Um, so you know, given uh, sort of Barry's position um, in, in you know in Welsh um, footballing history and yeah. how what's the connection like with the local community? around Jenner Park and around Barrytown itself? Um, if I look at it uh, more recently, um, Gavin and Stacey for example has done wonderful things for putting Barry on the map but before that, apart from the docks area, I'd like to think that Barry done a hell of a lot to put um, the, sort of, uh, the Barry local area on the map. Um, realistically, uh, we need to improve our community links, if I'm being totally honest with you, and I think that being part of a, a supporter initiative or a fans buyout, if you like, would certainly help us get closer to the local community. Um, in all honesty, we can be successful on the field, but our long-term uh, success will only be defined by our relationships with our local community. Right, OK. Um, so, it, looking at the... Uh, going back to the money now that's required. Yes. Um, 125k then sort of up front, which you know, is, is, is money that would then help the fans take control. And, and I'm right in saying that you're about two-thirds of the way there at the moment. Yeah, we've had quite a bit of interest, as I said, because the club itself is a profitable club. Um, at the moment, uh, the profits are being generated to improve uh, the surroundings, if you like. And, and our argument as supporters is whilst we appreciate that in terms of business decision, we need to see more uh, towards the football so that we look after the here and now to ensure we have a future. Um, but yeah, it's 125,000 to take over the running of the club um, up front. 
um, and we've had two uh, businessmen show an interest that we're, we're looking around about the 85,000 mark in terms of pledges and now we're looking at 40,000 um, left to raise in order to form some for part of a consortium maybe. Yeah, So, because there's different options on the table, aren't there, really, as to what, yeah. what you might pursue. What, what are the, you think you, we talked on there about three possible options for the club. What, what, tell us about those. Yeah, as a rough guide, you're looking at uh, three potential options. The first one, and probably the most uh, preferred, if you like, would be a, a total supporter buyout, whereby the, the money is raised, 125000 Therefore, the supporters club then will be masters of their own destiny, if they like. Um, the second option then is for the, the supporters uh, committee um, to find the extra 40,000 to be part of a consortium to go in partnership with the other two businessmen willing to get involved uh, and work that way. Or the final option would be that we find maybe some more business people who are interested, um, be it one, be it three, be it five, informing a board of directors and a consortium willing to take over and, and support the football. Sure. Um, so. 40, 40k short then, um, yes. and you know you're looking for uh, possible investors, but of course just members of the public as well, and people to get involved oh, around the doubt. you know around the area. Yeah, without a doubt. I realise uh, given this climate, it's extremely difficult, mm. but um, anything to help is is greatly appreciated. Mm. Uh, we've had a wonderful um, sort of response, if you like, in terms of our our media campaign, and, and hopefully that's raised awareness that will ultimately um, help us raise the money. Tell us a little bit how you've um, you know brought in social media uh, to the campaign tell us a bit about that yeah um, Twitter and, and Facebook have been um, uh, extremely prominent features if you like of our marketing campaign and our awareness campaign shall I say but but Twitter in particular is, has given us uh, access to an audience that we would not necessarily have access to and we've had some uh, some pretty prominent people from the world of sort of um, journalism if you like the likes of Henry Winter the likes of Patrick Barclay um, who have who have shown an awareness of our cause mm. and then some several celebrities uh, both in in football and out of football, the likes of your Stan Collymore's, your Robbie Fowler's, uh, your Ray Parlers, etc., who've really shown an awareness and, and uh, a desire to help our cause, you know? Sure. I mean, there's people, by the sounds of things, all across the world, all types of people, you know, famous, former footballers, etc., that, that are getting involved. Maybe it's time for people a little bit closer to home to, to be getting involved as well. Yeah, that would be ideal. You know, as I said, we need to forge greater links with the local community. And I think if you look at the Welsh Premier League at the moment, um, it's crying out for a team from in and around the capital because that league now is, is really kicking on to, to new heights. And, you know, it's, it's a good league to be a part of. I mean, we're all Cardiff City fans here at the uh, at the station, and <clears throat> obviously they just just missed out on promotion, but still yeah. a very prominent club in the, in the Championship. And you know, <clears throat> people have got different views on Swansea getting promoted to the Premiership, but on the whole, for Welsh football, it's um, you know it's, it's been a good year for Welsh football, and I, I think a team like Barry, who like we've discussed already, have got such um, pedigree in in football in history and with e European experience and things like that. I I think it would put a real um, tarnish on on the year, really, for Welsh football if if uh, we let a team like this um, slip into well into into football in oblivion. Oblivion, yeah. Oblivion, that's yeah. Right. yeah. And that's what's facing us. It's a very real threat. Um, if I'm being totally honest, there have been several sort of uh, mutings, if you like, over the years of. Um, sort of trouble at Barry in terms of trying to raise money etc but it's a very real threat that we face and you know going back to your point it's an extremely uh, uh, poignant one really because you look at the money generated at the high end of the game at the moment but it's all relative you know they generate the, the sums needed in order to fund the sums needed and I suppose we are no different but I look at Barry and, and what we've contributed over the years I go back to my ignorance earlier in terms of our history you know, we were one of the first clubs to, to sort of get involved in floodlit football. And look where we are now with floodlit football. One of the first exponents of using foreign players. And look where we are now, good and bad. Um, you know, so we've contributed a bit and hopefully people will realise that. Well, we've talked about, you know, the history and everything else like that. And it is a very, you know, it's a romantic thing. It's, it's something that people can be really passionate about and people are very passionate about. But if anybody listening to the radio now this evening has sort of uh, you know put a little bit of fire in their belly and they want to do something to help what can people you know just general people on the street do to help apart from you know you know would you want to raise awareness is there any sort of funds that they can donate to or anything like that what can people do yeah um, I think uh, from an awareness perspective we're doing extremely well our challenge now is to is to maintain the awareness whilst obviously trying to generate funds we've got um, uh, sort of websites that we uh, we sort of um, we're associated with in 
terms of um, we have a, a Barrytown message board for example which is at pro boards uh, which works extremely well we have the Twitter campaign uh, which is a hashtag save Barrytown um, FC which works well we've another sort of Twitter account which is at stand up for Barry um, we have numerous sort of blog spot uh, blog spots if you like which work well the majority of which have a donate button via PayPal for example um, or um, just get in contact via the, uh, the, the the supporters forum and we're more than willing you know it doesn't have to be money orientated we're interested in people who are, who are general football lovers who want to help us raise the profile of the club I'll be honest you know it's it I'm a, I'm a football manager stroke uh, university lecturer you know I, I'm, I'm not the most aware person if you like in terms of how to go about this so if there's anybody out there with expertise who could just channel our interests in areas then we'd be delighted to hear from them well, personally, I think it would be an absolute disaster. And, you know, like oh, I yeah. said, in, in a year where Welsh football have taken a, a step forward, yeah. I think losing um, Barry would be a step backwards and a real, real shame. So if there is anybody listening who has, has got any ideas or any new angles to, uh, um, or maybe a couple of thousand pounds in their back <laughs> pocket that they're willing to part with, I would plead with them really to get involved and, and try and do anything that they can no, I appreciate that yeah absolutely absolutely I mean and we'll certainly uh, uh, support the cause very much on our blog so go to our blog radiocardiffsport.blogspot.com and uh, we'll put a link to the uh, Save Barry Town FC campaign um, looking at the Welsh Premier now um, I, I have to be honest with you, I've, I've come to today's inter uh, interview with relative uh, ignorance about uh, Barry Town's current position so uh, in the Welsh Premier at the moment where, where are you sort of sitting? Well at the moment we're in the tier below the Welsh Premier because the, the Welsh Premier has had a, a, a restructure recently right. uh, whereby it's a sort of 12 team league now and it's aimed to raise standards and aimed to raise competition and the league is doing extremely well yeah. um, you have seven prominent teams there that are, that are sort of looking to drive the league forward and that's the here and now but when the league first started you know, Barrytown with a team that started off the professional era. Barrytown with a team that got into Europe. Barrytown with a team that fought, you know, to raise the standards. And, and admittedly, that probably put a few noses at a joint in the same process. But at the same time, we must, whether uh, we like the club or hate the club, respect what the, the club has done for the game in Wales. And, and hopefully those days can return again. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is. We were talking about Paul Scholes last week, weren't we? Saying about respect, and we were saying how much we can't stand the fact that uh, you know him as a player. There's a lot of Liverpool fans in here, but yeah. uh, you got you've got it. You've got to respect what clubs, what players achieve, yeah. whether they're part of a, a you know a local rivalry or, or whatever, haven't you? Without a doubt, and uh, you know history is something you can't buy. Mm. And I'm proud to be associated with the club, and I hope that you know it's our hundredth year this year. And the motto of the supporters committee, if you like, is we're doing this for all that have gone before us and ideally all that will come after us because the way I look at it we are custodians of a club you know they say that the famous thing about the managers is that all managers are caretakers it's just some take care for longer than others and, and we're the same and hopefully we can pass it on to the next generation to take it forward great stuff okay so we'll return to a little bit uh, more chat about Barrytown straight after this jingle <laughs> This is the Tuesday Night Sports Show on 98.7 FM. The Radio Cardiff Tuesday Night Sports Show, available now from the iTunes Store. Okay then, uh, so we're, we're here today with... Um, with Gavin, who's uh, from the Save Barry Town uh, FC campaign, and uh, Gavin, we're just going to go over again now the uh, the ways that people can get in touch um, because it's really important this uh, to to preserve a fantastic Welsh club in its hundredth year. Mm -hmm. So uh, just run down uh, ways people can get in get involved. Yeah, the forum is probably one of the most active forums, and the address for that is www. Barrytown. That's one word. dot proboards. Um, dot com. Um, and that's an extremely um, successful way of getting in contact with us. Likewise, the other opportunities lie on Twitter um, with the um, Stand Up For Barry um, football club um, movement and the um, uh, Stand Up, what's the other one, at Barrytown 
uh, yeah. SC, which yeah. is the supporters committee, and you know they're, they're they're the best ways to get in contact. There's even if it's just a message of support or an offer of help, they'll be wonderful. Yeah, and it's the hashtag, isn't it? Save Barry Town FC. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's the absolutely. Thing yeah, well, well, we'll retweet that a few times for you today. Thank you. That's great stuff. The uh, the Twitter links are obviously important. They've uh, got us out to a market that maybe we wouldn't have exploited before, and you've seen the popularity of the, the sort of Rio, Fi Rio Ferdinand sort of hashtag Stay in Your Feet campaign. Hopefully, we can follow in his footsteps, but. Uh, for us at the moment, it's um, at Barrytown um, SC, which is the supporters committee, and at Stand Up for Barry. Um, like, uh, in addition to the uh, the website, which is www.barrytown.proboards.com. That's fantastic. Well, Gavin, we'd really like to thank you for coming in today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Likewise, thanks and, uh, so much for having us. Well, that's an, uh, absolutely, and then you, please come back. All right, you're, you're absolutely welcome. It's an open door here. And uh, Hannah, uh, as well, over in the corner there, it's been lovely having you in the studio as well. Don't forget that you can download this uh, programme a little bit later on, and I'm going to make a special podcast with our feature with uh, Gavin about Barrytown as well, which is uh, equally downloadable for free from our blog and from the iTunes store. Thank you for downloading the Radio Cardiff Sport Podcast. For more information about the show, go to our blog. Radio Cardiff Sport dot blogspot dot com